All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Photon Sailor mod, which is being made by form user Freethinker. And what this glorious little piece of work looks at into the game is solar sails. Or, well, really, photon sails, but I mean, come on, same difference there. And I love this, as I've always been fascinated with solar sailing. The whole idea of propelling a ship with, you know, radiation pressure from the sun is kind of a cool idea to me. And even though it's slow to accelerate over time, this sort of stuff can actually obtain some pretty high speeds just over a really long time. So let's jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what this does add in. And let's grab a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison's sake, and then head down to our generator's closet mod filter to just have on photon sail. And we'll head down to the engines category where we have our only two parts, which are an aluminium photon sail and a gold photon sail. Now the big difference between the two of these is their mass and mass and our uh, max temperature. So the mass of the aluminium photon sail is a 0.722 tons, whereas the gold sail is 0.76. Now the max temperature on the photon sail is 933, and the gold photon sail, the max temp is 1,333. Overall, they're, you know, pretty similar and, you know, wonderful and gigantic, as you can clearly see here. This is the protected photon sail before it is deployed. And if we just right click and go to deploy sail, oh, uh, look at that sweet, sweet animation opening up and soon it will begin to extend out the arms. And if I zoom out, there we go, it should stop right about there there we go excellent and if we right click on this thing again well we have some interesting information and uh haha <laughs> the surface area on this thing is gigantic it's 144,400 square meters and it has a diameter of uh, 380 meters again that mass of seven uh, or point seven two two tons the minimum and maximum wavelength and uh, then we we also have some other information here. This little bar is the beamed photon throttle. Now one of the fun things about this mod is you aren't just relegated to having these sails be propelled by the sun. You can also use this beam photon throttle to basically have a beam come from the planet to hit it to help you with acceleration to get up to faster speeds more quickly. And we then have the option of the beam to push direction to basically have the beam either pushing forward or backward. And you just toggle between the two however you like. Now me, I actually really haven't been using this often. I have pretty much only been sailing via the solar winds because, again, I just I really, really like that idea. Now let's grab the uh, gold photon sail here as well, pop it on, and of course deploy. And another difference can be seen here in the min and max wavelength. The max wavelength of both is 0.01 meters. The minimum wavelength on this one is 1 E07. And the uh, gold sail is 6.2 E07. There we go. And so we have the different wavelengths for the two. And yeah, other than that, they're, they're gold. And this one's aluminium. And they're beautiful. And uh, thankfully also compatible with Textures Unlimited. So if you don't like just a solid gold thing here, you, you can work with that, which is lovely. Now that's really all we can look at in the vehicle assembly building. So let's actually go out in space where I have a photon sailor up there that I've been playing around with. And we'll just go straight to you and kind of talk about some of the oddities with doing solar sailing. Because, of course, this isn't like a normal engine. You're not really paying attention, or at least as much, to retrograde and prograde. I mean, it is useful, but you're more worried about the location of Kerbin there. Because, of course, if Kerbin's behind us, 
it's going to push us forward. If it's in front of us, it's going to slow us down. And so let us open up our solar sail. I'll actually turn on SAS and actually put us to prograde. And notice we have a lot more information here now. We, of course, still have that diameter. We also have the skin temperature. Good to know. We have our solar flux, our solar force max, and solar force sail. So how much force is being put on this baby? Our solar acceleration, which is very useful. Our solar pitch angle, which is very useful to figuring out what your angle to the sun is and, you know, helping you with maneuvers. We then have our max drag, drag coefficient, diffuse drag, specular drag. And in my mind, some of the most important info here is our periapsis change, apoapsis change, and the orbit diameter change. Because this, well, this is telling you how, you know, your orbit is changing, which is very useful. So right now, we're actually kind of having our orbit fall on us. We're going down negative 1.6 meters per second. We are actually accelerating, but because of our angle to the sun, which is wonky, it's, uh, yeah, basically the sun's coming in from that direction, and then it's bouncing, like, the waves up that way. So you have to account for the angle of your sails to the sun. So if we actually angle that way, oh, wait, wait, almost had it. There we go. That direction. No, no, I lost it again. Again, tricky. There we go. We're now actually gaining orbit at a rate of 0.27 meters per second. But hey, we're not losing orbit anymore. We are actually gaining, so we hopefully won't crash. I mean, we have a really high orbit, so it'll take a while, but still, nonetheless. So yeah, you really gotta pay attention to things like your solar acceleration, your solar pitch angle, your apoapsis and periapsis change, and of course your orbit diameter change. But, you know, again, the basics are really, if you're pointed away from the sun, you're gonna go faster and, you know, hopefully orbit change. And then if you're facing towards the sun, well, we're now losing our speed at negative nine meters per second there. Or, well, actually, that's not negative nine meters per second. It's point... Oh, boy. Yeah, a couple of points there. <laughs> yeah, that's not nine meters per second. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're losing speed. But, again, if we face away we begin to accelerate it. And our angle to the sun will determine how our apoapsis and periapsis changes. Now, just kind of a quick little bit of info about how that's supposed to go. If you are trying to expand your orbit and you are in an orbit around Kerbin, you're actually going to want to be 45 degrees from retrograde to actually extend your orbit outward, which seems a bit counterintuitive. And same thing on going the other way, if you're wanting to lower your orbit and your round Kerbin, you want to be 45 degrees from prograde, and basically so that you can actually slow yourself down more. So it's a, it's a bit counterintuitive, but with some effort and some practice, you can get this thing going. And it is compatible, which I really love, with Copernicus planet packs that add in multiple star systems, so you can, in fact, you know, use this to travel between solar systems and still make it back via the other star that you're heading towards. It's really great, so it just takes all that into account, which is wonderful. And it's just an interesting new way of messing around with, you know, propulsion. Now, one other thing I should mention, uh, you'll notice we haven't actually lost any electric charge, even though we've been flying this whole time, and this ship actually has no solar panels. Uh, the solar sail does produce a small amount of electric charge, according to the mod page. Not much, pretty much just enough to keep a probe core going. So if you build, like, a big ship back here, it's not going to really do you very well. But if it's just a probe, like a thing like this, literally a probe and a communication device, you're good, really. It'll, it'll be fine. But anything more, you know, that's going to be issue. Uh, and oh, uh, one more thing, of course, I should mention because of the very, very low levels of acceleration on this thing. You really do want to keep your ships small and light. The heavier you are... 
Well, the slower you're going to go, which, I mean, of course, that's with really any ship. But with how slow your acceleration is on this thing, <laughs> yeah, it means a lot more. But yes, you now have a lovely solar sail. I really do love this thing. I I'm going to be playing around with it a lot because, again, I just love this sort of technology. It's just a fun, new, interesting way to get around the Kerbal Star System. So if you'd like to check this out for yourself, which I would definitely recommend you go and do, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for me here today, friends. I hope you all have enjoyed and, of course, that you do come back for the next episode when, hopefully, we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!